Welcome to the Make You Famous podcast, where host Jeffrey Goldsmith talks with guests about fame and how to achieve it. I'm your host, Jeffrey Goldsmith, and check out the book at makeyoufamous.co. Nice to meet you, Hannah. Yeah, nice to meet you too, Jeff. So tell me, um, we kind of met randomly on FameBit. Yes. Yeah. And you're, you ha- how many followers do you have on YouTube now? Um, about 16,000. Yeah, and Instagram? Uh, a couple thousand. Yeah, okay. And so what's your strategy? What are you trying to do? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> One that I'm always trying to figure out. Yeah. Um, mostly everything. just yeah. yeah everything. Uh, well, I really love fashion, so I want to share that with others. And I think I kind of have a unique perspective on fashion. Um, I do it on a budget. I do it secondhand, you know, thrifting. And so I like to be able to share that with people. Cool. Well, so this is a Cavalli shirt. Oh, very nice. Yeah. And it's, it's like the black part's a little translucent, but you can't really see it right now. And mm-hmm. I shop at Wasteland on Haight Street. In oh, okay. And also at a place called Held Over. And there's a number, right? Like right around the corner from my house. Mm-hmm. I'm a believer, right? Oh, good. I, I may have already influenced you then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I've been doing this for years. Andy Warhol said, you know, if you have a sense of style, you can look great for $5, right? That's true. Yep. And I, I once interviewed Allen Ginsberg, and he told me he owned one suit, a Brooks Brothers suit that he bought at a thrift shop. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not, it's not unknown to the um, to poets and artists and so forth that buying thrift can mm-hmm. look great for less, basically. Yeah, and it's a great way to express your own personal style. You know, it's, it's different than the trends. You know, you get to start your own trends. Right, right, yeah. it's interesting. Yeah. So, so what, and so how are you going about getting the word out about what you're doing? I mean, obviously you're doing this, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of social media, just, I usually try any new platform that comes out. I've really taken to Instagram though. Um, just emailing editors and like uh, magazine editors and just telling them who I am, just trying to get my name out there. Okay. So magazine editors. So I, I used to have a website called objectfetish.com. And we sold, first we sold stuff for, for, for stores in San Francisco, New York, and LA. And then we focused just on jewelry. When we focused on jewelry, then I, I got us in, uh, I think it was L Magazine three times. Because I wrote to the um, accessories editor and said, hey, check out the jewelry we've got. And he wrote back, hey, do you have anything like this theme and that mm-hmm. theme? So he was looking for content. Right. And that's something that I think people don't know is that editors and you know people who are running big media sites are hungry for content. Right, yeah. Cool, right? Yeah. So you can end up with a column somewhere Maybe, <laughs> maybe I will one day. I just keep pitching myself. <laughs> yes, you yeah. could also. You know what else you could do is you could do like a uh, thrift store re- review, mm-hmm. and you could go in with a video and shoot in thrift stores about what they've got mm-hmm. all over the world. Yeah, and that way, um, interesting idea, right, Hannah? I promise you I would do this. I would brainstorm <laughs> ideas. So you yeah. could go into thrift stores and video what they've got and talk mm-hmm. to the people working there and talk to people shopping mm-hmm. and do a report on thrift stores. Right. I, I've thought of doing that just in a written form. Uh, I've never thought of doing it as a video, though. I would feel like that might be invasive to people. Like, hey, I'm just going to film in your store, you know? Try it. Ask. <laughs> I guess it's worth a shot. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you come to San Francisco, I swear, like 8th Street, you can, mm-hmm. spend, you can spend a day here and have enough content. If you did it once a week, you'd have enough content yeah. for two months. Right. That'd be fun. Yeah. L.A. also has really good thrift stores. You know, city. Mm-hmm. Where, where are you, by the way? I can't remember. I'm in Wisconsin, a small town in Wisconsin. That's amazing. Yeah. So, so do you travel much or not yet? 
Um, I take the normal kind of family road trips, you know, those kind of vacations across the country, but that's about as much as I get out. Well, then I wonder, so, where, so how far are you from Madison, from Kenosha, from, from, from uh, Milwaukee's also really cool. Yeah, um, I'm, about, I'm about 40 minutes from Madison, uh, okay. 40 minutes south of Madison, probably about three hours from Milwaukee. Okay, but you're not far from Chicago. Yeah, that, that's another one that's pretty close. Probably about two and a half hours from Chicago. Okay. <laughs> so I've done the drive from Chicago to Madison. Mm -hmm. um, you could go to Madison, you could go to Chicago, you could go to Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, I, I read something once um, that if you want to change careers or start a career, doing little experiments is the way to do it right you know, because you try these things and if they work then you're like ah oh, and people respond to it and you're like ah oh, mm -hmm. insight that's what people want yeah right <laughs> yeah a few weeks ago i actually did sort of an experiment with my social media i did this um an event i guess an online event called live from the 80s where every day i did um, live videos and I just lived like it was the 80s and I just presented that sort of lifestyle online just to cool. you know it was fun for me and it was an experiment I was going to do personally and then write about but then I was like why not bring the internet in on it so we enjoyed a whole week of living like it was the 80s. <laughs> so. That's a cool idea. Yeah. You could so there's another idea there is that you could invite your followers to post like videos or photos from the 80s. Mm -hmm. yes. Duran Duran, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I do love to include them as much as possible. You know, that besides building up myself and like presenting myself, I want to also include as many people as possible, you know, create the community feel. So that's cool. You know, yeah, I mean, create, well, it's not just the feel. I think you really are, you can really create a community. Mm hmm. It's really interesting. Yeah. And so how did you get started doing this stuff? What inspired you to begin to do social media around fashion? Well, I had always liked fashion. Um, definitely in high school, I really liked it, but I, my friends didn't like it. And so I, I just tried to blend in and just be normal. And then after high school, um, let's see, it would have been you know, like eight, nine years ago. After I got out, then I was like, you know what? I can be whoever I want to be. So then I decided to really play up fashion and I've always loved fashion magazines. So I was definitely inspired by all of that in fashion magazines and blogs had just started. This was around like 2009. Mm -hmm. I started reading fashion blogs. And I was like, I want to do that. That's how you shared with other people, you know, because right. it was before Instagram and everything. So mm -hmm. 2009 was when I would have started my first blog. And That's amazing. Yeah. And so, so you're making a little money at it or? Yeah, yeah, I've definitely started monetizing a lot more seriously in the last year, but I've probably spent about two years just trying to figure out how to do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that, that's a lesson to people, right? It's like 2009, 2017, that's eight years. Yeah, yeah. 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 I guess I'm a little behind. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's true. I, I think that there's this mythology that you just start something and boom, it blows up. Mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. very rare. And mm -hmm. like, oh, Keisha thought my dog was the cutest dog in the world. And now I have 10 million followers. Like that, mm -hmm. is, it's like winning a lottery ticket. Yeah. And that kind of thing does happen. But, and because it happens and then we read news about it, mm -hmm. that's the norm. But yeah. I think what you're doing, like overnight, yeah, I had to work 20 years to be an overnight success. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's much more typical. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. I, I think that that's great. That's a great lesson for people. That mm -hmm. You really have to work at something. To become yeah. a famous fashion um, uh, blogger, a comic mm -hmm. It's years sometimes. Yeah. And of course, blogging is still such a new um, medium that we're all still trying to figure it out. Like, where is it going? How, how do you do it? And so. Well, everyone is becoming their own independent 
celebrity. Mm -hmm. Like you're in charge of your own. Um, in the old days, it was the star system, right? Mm -hmm. Hollywood producers and the Hollywood scene, they had control of all the stars. Everybody's under contract, blah, blah, blah. It's not that way anymore because mm -hmm. everyone can produce their own. Look at this, look what we're doing. Yeah. We can produce our own media and do whatever we want. And it, it, interestingly, in Japan, it still is this hierarchical structured system. Oh. Agents and the agents can't have all the celebrities under contract. Even mm -hmm. the web properties are our own. I'm, I'm going to do an event in Japan uh, soon, and I'm, I used to live there, and it's just an interesting contrast to the U.S. And so, yeah, that's what definitely we talk about. Um, yeah. yeah, maybe you'll you'll go to Tokyo one day, and there, there's a there, oh, there's really cool thrift shops in a place called Harajuku. Okay. Okay. I've probably heard of it. You could fund your trip by taking a suitcase full of cool, cool clothes to Harajuku and selling them. <laughs> yes, I could. And yeah. you can make a video about selling those clothes and funding your trip to Tokyo. <laughs> and then, wow. And then, <laughs> yeah, it's quite cheap. I mean, you can get an Airbnb for 50 bucks a night there. And then, right. Yeah, that'd be interesting to see if you actually did that. Mm -hmm. There's another idea, Hannah. I know, you're just full of all good three. ideas. <laughs> well, I could come up with many more. You'd have yeah. to spend three lifetimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's what I'm good at, actually. Yeah, you said you were a marketing guy, so, yeah. <laughs> Atypical. Yeah, I, 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 so, what else? More ideas. Let's see. <laughs> um, Do you need more? Do you I don't know. Do you have any of your of your followers who are? You have a core group of followers that you talk to all the time. Right. Yes. Yes. Definitely. How many of them are there? Do you think? I want to say at least twenty to thirty. Okay. That you know, I so recognize their names when it pops up. And so here's another idea. Mm -hmm. If you're not traveling that much, if you if you have your focus, which is Chicago, Milwaukee, Madison. Mm -hmm. Milwaukee is, a, I loved Milwaukee. I was just there. I was picking up my son in Kenosha. Mm, he, was, okay. uh, he was hanging out with my aunt and uncle doing art projects. Um, so if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you have that area, then you just need to find someone in LA, someone in Portland and or Seattle, someone in New York, someone in Miami, Las Vegas. That's, that's all you need is like four or five people to start and ask them to go out and shoot stuff. Mm -hmm. And you still have, then, then you have a network of people, you know, the outfit repeater becomes this um, producer of viral content, viral fashion thrift content from all over the world. You could find someone in Tokyo. You could put an ad on Craigslist. Mm -hmm. I want to be a reporter for the outfit repeater. Yeah, yeah. You can create a, cool. gl a global network of right. outfit repeaters and yeah. make, a, make an outfit repeater t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Right. With staff on the back. And then, <laughs> then they're official. Yeah. <laughs> you can make, and then like laminate a card. Mm -hmm. have a laminated card. The oh, VIP yeah. card. Right, I'm from the fashion repeater. Can I film in your store? Mm-hmm. And make it all look like real. Really big deal. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds fun. <laughs> so that's idea number four. I, I lost count. But a lot. <laughs> that's but, why you're recording it, so you can remember everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there you go. That's mm -hmm. those are some ideas. You know, so I, I what I'd like to do is I, I guess follow you, Hannah, mm -hmm. and see what you do next. Could be anything. Let <laughs> why you know after this I'll I'll send you a link to this recording and then you tell me write me an email and say hey this is what's interesting about this, this is what, here's what I think I'm going to do okay and then we can see and I I can ask people to to look at this and see what they think all um, right how do they want to help Hannah <laughs> that would be really nice of you. <laughs> 
not that nice. I mean, it's just an experiment. I'm just yeah. curious. Right, right. <laughs> of course. Why not help you? Mm -hmm. what, what? Everyone should be helping everybody else. Right. Well, that yeah, that's uh, definitely a philosophy that I follow online. You know, I have made a lot of connections with other bloggers and YouTubers, and you know, we all help one another behind the scenes. That's cool. So. Yeah. So do you have advice for something I ask everybody I interview, like, do you have advice for people? Advice for like getting into fashion? <laughs> into fashion, into, into doing blogging, like, um, what, do, what do people need to do? I mean, eight years is a long time to persevere. Right. Uh, just learn as much as possible. Try anything once. Um, yeah, just keep learning. That's what I do. Okay. And I guess this is part of it. Mm -hmm. And I've yeah. learned something from you too. I didn't oh. realize it. Eight years. Yeah. Okay. Was there anything else you want to add, Hannah? Thank you for having me. I, uh, this is my first time doing a podcast, so I was kind of nervous. I didn't know what to expect. I, you know, a lot of hard questions. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I also, I, I don't normally um, do video calls with, I, I don't want to call you a stranger, but, you know, just like just first time meeting someone doing a video call. This was right. totally new to me. I've never, you know, I just took a chance. I do the scary yeah. thing first and then I'll freak out about it later. Like, oh my gosh, I just did something. <laughs> <laughs> so th that's, a, that's a good piece of advice. Do mm -hmm. the scary thing and freak out later. Yep. <laughs> yep, that's how I fight my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Was there anything else you wanna add before we go? Um, no, I can't think of any good parting lines. <laughs> But that, thank you very much for, for, for being with us. And yeah, thank you very much. You're a good, uh, good example of perseverance. And I, I think you already are successful. Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of continuing on the, on the path. Well, thank you. Thank you for saying so. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we'll talk again soon. All right. Thank Let you. Know how it goes. Oh, I will. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening and be sure to check out the book at makeyoufamous.co.